फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू टेंथ वीक लेक्चर दिस इज फ्रॉम सेकेंड मार्च टू एथ मार्च फॉर द इवेंट्स विच अकर्ड बिटवीन सेकेंड मार्च टू एथ मार्च एज यूजल वन लेक्चर पार्ट एंड टू क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर सेशन वॉट आर द इंपॉर्टेंट इवेंट्स फॉर द वीक सार्क यात्रा बाय फॉरन सेक्रेटरी द बेसिक पर्पज ऑफ सार्क यात्रा इज टू स्टार्ट फ्रेश डायलॉग प्रोसेस विथ पाकिस्तान नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इवेंट इज बैन ऑन इंडिया डॉटर The documentary film was banned in India. Huge bonanza for government. Auction sale of 2G and 3G in progress. Then scrapping the Muslim quota in educational institutions in Maharashtra. Other important event is lynching of rape accused from Dimapur jail in Nagaland, which resulted in heightening of tensions between Nagaland and Assam. north east is always a sensitive issue the next important aspect is rbi relaxes loan to value rules for loans up to 10 lakh that is for affordable housing category up to 10 lakhs relaxation of rules the other important aspect is monetary policy framework signed between government and rbi forbes rich list new bcci chief jagmohan dalmia then one more important event is women's day was celebrated International Women's Day on March 8th. Then passing away of Vinod Mehta, the famous journalist, well known for Outlook magazine. Let us start in detail the first event of the week. now let us look at the first issue of the week this is with regard to secretary level talks between india and pakistan the foreign secretary jay shankar started sark yatra from timpu in bhutan the basic purpose of sark yatra is to resume talks with pakistan is to resume talks with pakistan in this connection the foreign secretary s jay shankar visited islamabad and held discussions with aizaz ahmed choudhry the foreign secretary of pakistan i would like to tell you brief about the need to resume the discussions foreign secretary level talks were last held in the year 2012 subsequently in the year 2014 when separatist leaders met the pakistani high commissioner in delhi india stopped the dialogue process and now indian government wants to resume the talks accordingly sark yatra was started by the foreign secretary with the main focus on pakistan issue there are two issues which came up during the discussions first one is cross border terrorism the second issue is with regard to the trial of the accused in mumbai attacks indian government feels that the trial process is going very slow so these two issues were raised by indian foreign secretary he also handed over a letter written by sri narendra modi to the pakistani prime minister nawaz sharif so it appears that it is the first step to resume the talks to normalize relations between india and pakistan after the nda government came to power in may 2014 right having learned this let us learn a bit about the kashmir problem with regard to the kashmir problem there are always three versions one is the indian version the second one is pakistani version and third one is the version as per the international media i would like to take a balanced view and 
I will try to narrate the facts to the extent as known from various reports. Right? First and the foremost issue is Kashmir is the beautiful state. The region is beautiful because of its high mountains, valleys, pleasant climate and Jammu and Kashmir was the princely state ruled by Raja Hari Singh ruled by Raja Hari Singh at the time of independence in the year 1947. As per the Indian Independence Act, there are two issues. First one is with regard to British India. For British India, they divided based on religion, that is a two-nation theory. Muslim majority areas have gone to Pakistan and remaining territory of British India is with India. But what about sovereign states? At the time of independence, there were more than 550 sovereign states, each ruled by a king. As per the Independence Act, these sovereign states can accede to either India or Pakistan or they can stay sovereign. I would like to tell you once again, these sovereign states ruled by kings and maharajas can exceed their territory to India or Pakistan or they can remain sovereign out of more than 550 states because of the statesmanship shown by Sardar Vallabhai Patel these states were merged into Indian Union of course some resistance was encountered with regard to some states but because of the statesmanship of the then Home Minister Sardar Vallabhai Patel all these sovereign states were merged into Indian Union but the case of Jammu and Kashmir is slightly different. Jammu and Kashmir region lies between India on one side, Pakistan on the other side. The other important aspect is, it was ruled by a Hindu king, but majority of the population are Muslim. At that time, Raja Hari Singh, the king of Kashmir, decided to stay independent without aligning with either India or Pakistan. He decided to stay sovereign. But subsequently, around 5,000 tribesmen with the Pakistani army invaded Jammu and Kashmir region by killing several people and they came close to Srinagar. They reached almost close to Srinagar. At that time, Raja Hari Singh sought the help of Indian authorities. Indian authorities put a condition, accession with India to send military aid to Srinagar. Raja Hari Singh exceeded the territory of Jammu and Kashmir to India and Indian government sent the troops to Jammu and Kashmir. Subsequently, the Pakistani troops were pushed back and the matter was referred to United Nations by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. The matter was referred to United Nations by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru against the wishes of Sardar Vallabhai Patel. United Nations stipulated three conditions. First and the foremost condition is Pakistani troops should go back to the ceasefire line. Pakistani troops should go back to the positions which was known as the ceasefire line. Second point is India should reduce the military presence to the minimum. The third point is once the situation normalizes in Jammu and Kashmir, plebiscite is supposed to be held. I would like to list out the subsequent developments. This issue is lingering for the past uh, 68 years from independence. Subsequently, Government of India brought Article 370 giving special status to Jammu and Kashmir. Second thing is in the 1962 India-China war, part of the Jammu and Kashmir region was invaded by China. 
the region name is aksai chin india and pakistan a war took place in the year 1965 subsequently tashkent agreement was signed popularly known as tashkent declaration the declaration was signed by indian prime minister lal bahadur shastri and pakistani president ayub khan that clearly states that the troops should go back to their cease fire line positions and no one should interfere in the others internal affairs subsequently shimla agreement was signed in the year 1972 between indira gandhi and zulfikar ali bhutto as per that shimla agreement cease fire line was renamed as line of control what we call now loc or line of control 1972 shimla agreement subsequently 1999 kargil war 2001 attack on indian parliament 2008 mumbai attacks these are the developments subsequent to 1949 and the present status is known to everyone the relations between india and pakistan are still strained having known these things i would like to list out what exactly india gained what exactly pakistan gained out of this strife for the past 68 years let us look at indian side first and foremost thing is the confrontation gave rise to militancy in the region militant activities increased in the 90s which resulted in the loss of several civilians army men as well as militants second important point is armed forces special powers act which came into existence in the year 1958 because of which there were allegations that army committed lot of excesses on the civilians the third important point is kashmiri pandits were displaced from their place of birth they are staying in other parts of the country and these three things happened which are very important first and the foremost i would like to summarize it gave rise to militancy second is alienation of local people because of excesses committed by indian army third thing is displacement of kashmiri pandits from kashmir region when you come to pakistan there were several allegations against pakistan that they are aiding and abetting terrorists across the border but pakistan always denies these allegations the main condition of pakistan is plebiscite is to be held as per the united nations resolution second important point is pakistan suffered because of terrorist activities in recent times there are several attacks on shiite mosques on churches so ultimately during the past 68 years in this atmosphere of confrontation both the countries suffered due to one or the other reasons and it is the time to settle the dispute and i hope you understood the kashmir issue having learned these issues let us come back to the real issue for the time being that is foreign secretary's visit to pakistan to normalize relations to begin talks with regard to finding a permanent solution to the kashmir issue and let us hope to make a new beginning with the visit of the foreign secretary to islamabad and let peace prevail across the region that any common man will wish for right look into the next one ban on india's daughter india's daughter is the documentary film produced by the british direct leslie woodwin this is the documentary film produced by british director 
Leslie Udwin. Here there are two issues. One issue is interview with rape accused in Tihar Central Jail. The second issue is showing India in bad light. Showing India in poor light. These two issues were raised by India, but the film director says that she obtained permission of Ministry of Home Affairs as well as jail authorities to interview the accused and India is not happy with the inclusion of the words by the rape accused. Because of that, India banned the film, but before enforcing real ban, the film appeared through YouTube and it also appeared through several URLs. URL means Uniform Resource Locator. It also appeared through several URLs. Strictly speaking, the ban could not be enforced through internet media and still India's stand is with regard to these two things. Interview with rape accused and showing India in bad light. This film is banned in India, but there is a divergent opinion with the regard to the banning of this film in our country. Right? Please look into the next one. Spectrum sale. Spectrum 800 megahertz, 900 megahertz, 1800 megahertz, 2100 megahertz, 2100 megahertz. These four bands, these are nothing but electromagnetic waves. This megahertz, that is the frequency. If you say 900 megahertz, 900 into 10 power 6 cycles per second. So, when the frequency increases, the carrying capacity will increase. This time, this spectrum is auctioned in 800, 900, 1800 and 2100 megahertz. And please remember, government's target is 82,000 crores and government is expected to get more than 1 lakh crores through spectrum auction. The target is 82,000, but as per the trends available in the auctions, the government is expected to get more than 1 lakh crores of rupees. Right? Look into the next issue. Maharashtra scraps Muslim quota. The other aspect about Maharashtra this week is the ban on cow or bullock slaughter. We have already discussed in the question and answer session. Ban on cow or bullock slaughter. The second one is Maharashtra scraps Muslim quota. I would like to tell little history about this. In the year 2008, Mahmud Ur Rahman panel was appointed to look into the backwardness of Muslims. Accordingly, they recommended 8 to 10 percent reservation for Muslims, not only in educational institutions, but also in jobs. Subsequently, during last year, before the elections, Congress and CP government, during last year, June 2014, came up with an ordinance with 16% reservation for Marathas, 16% reservation for Marathas and 5% reservation for Muslims, both in educational institutions and jobs. Subsequently, Bombay High Court quashed 16% reservation for Marathas and it also quashed 5% reservation for Muslims in jobs, but High Court continued the reservation of 5% in educational institutions. But now, the Maharashtra government took a decision. BJP and Shiv Shena government in Maharashtra now took a decision to scrap 5% reservation for Muslims in educational institutions also. So, now there is no reservation either in educational institutions or in jobs in Maharashtra at present. Right, friends, look into the next one. Tension in Assam and Nagaland. In Assam, a rape accused 
was arrested by the police and around 7 to 8000 mob lynched that person Said Farid Khan who originally belongs to Karim Ganj district of Assam settled in Dimapur in Nagaland and he was lynched by the mob because of which there was a heightened tension in both Assam and Nagaland but government took immediate steps to control escalation of violence by imposing curfew in Dimapur three officials three senior officials were suspended immediately and now in both the states peace is prevailing right when it comes to economy affordable housing up to 10 lakhs rbi relaxes loan to value rules what is loan to value i would like to tell you one example if you are taking bank loan for constructing a house or for purchasing a flat how much percentage bank will give that is loan to value if the cost of your house is 20 lakhs If the bank is giving 80% of 20 lakh that means 16 lakhs loan will be given by bank remaining 4 lakhs you have to mobilize your own sources that is the meaning of loan to value loan to value means out of the total value how much percent bank or financial institutions are giving as loan that is loan to value now rbi came up with certain guidelines with regard to the loans up to 10 lakhs remember when you are taking loan for construction of a house or purchasing a flat stamp duty registration charges and other documentation charges are not included stamp duty registration charges and other documentation charges are not included but now rbi took a decision these charges will be included if the cost of the house does not exceed 10 lakhs these registration charges documentation charges or other documentation charges will be included to the cost of the house and because of this customer is expected to get more loan customer is expected to get more loan so as to give impetus to the housing sector for the common man RBI took this decision documentation charges stamp duty and other charges will be included in the cost of the house so that the customer or the common man will get more loan from the bank right let us look at the next one recently agreement was signed between RBI and the central government between RBI and central government with regard to inflation targeting what is the main purpose of monetary policy the main purpose of monetary policy is to keep inflation under check rbi through its monetary policy regulates the circulation of money which in turn will have effect on the inflation the main purpose of rbi's monetary policy is to control inflation because when inflation is there common man will be affected so now rbi and central government came to an understanding and the understanding is rbi will take all the measures to control inflation below 6% two points are important here from the financial year 2016 17 onwards the inflation will be 4% plus or minus 2% it should be it should vary between 2 to 6 percent i once again repeat it should be 4 percent plus or minus 2 percent but for the year 2015-16 if inflation is more than 6 percent for three consecutive quarters rbi will give the report to the central government right please look into the next one forbes rich list forbes is one of the 
well-known business magazines based in United States of America, other two, Fortune, Bloomsburg. These three are main business magazines, important business magazines you can say. Forbes every year publishes the rich list. As per the report published by Forbes for the year 2015, there are 1826 billionaires across the world. If you look at the world, there are a total of 1826 billionaires who are holding the combined wealth of 7.05 trillion dollars. 1826 billionaires. Who is leading? United States of America is leading the rich with 536, China with 213, India is in fourth position with 90 billionaires and remember who is the richest person in the world? Bill Gates is number one, followed by Carlos Slim of Mexico, then Warren Buffett. Bill Gates, Carlos Slim of Mexico and Warren Buffett, these three are the richest in the world. And when it comes to India, as per the initial estimate, they stated Mukesh Ambani is the richest Indian. But after revision, within the next few days, they came up with another statement that Mr. Dilip Shangvi of Sun Pharmaceuticals, Dilip Shangvi of Sun Pharmaceuticals is the richest Indian and his position globally is 37th. Right friends, let us look at the next one, sports. Jack Mohan Dalmia, elected as new BCCI chief, the contentious tenure of N. Srinivasan ends. Mr. Jack Mohan Dalmia, during his previous tenure, was credited with harnessing the huge market potential of cricket and at the same time, he was also removed from the post due to misappropriation of funds. Now he became the new BCCI chief. He will be in this post for a period of three years. Mr. Anurag Thakur was elected as the secretary of BCCI. Right? Please don't forget these things. Next issue, All England Badminton Championship. This All England Badminton Tournament was started in the year 1899 and is being held regularly except the periods of First World War and Second World War. And in this connection, I would like to state few important points. In this All England Badminton Championship, men's singles, only two Indians won the tournament. In the year 1980, Prakash Padukone from Karnataka won the All England Badminton Tournament. Who is Prakash Padukone? All of you are well aware about Deepika Padukone. Prakash Padukone is the father of Deepika and he won the All England Badminton Championship in the year 1980 and he started Prakash Padukone Badminton Academy in Bangalore. The second one to win All England Badminton Championship during its history from India is Pullala Gopichand from Andhra Pradesh. He started Gopichand Badminton Academy in Hyderabad. These two won the men's singles so far from India, but in women's category, nobody could win till date. This year, that opportunity knocked at the doors of Saina Nehwal, but she lost in the final to Carolina Marin of Spain. She lost in the final to Carolina Marin in the final. She won the first set. Saina Nehwal won the first set by 21-16, but lost the next two sets by 14-21 and 7-21. She lost the opportunity to become the first women's champion in All England Badminton Championship. So, look at the person who won the men's singles. China's Long Chen won the men's singles. Spain's Carolina Marin won the women's singles. Right? Having learned this, let us look at 
the other is you. Famous veteran journalist Vinod Mehta passed away at the age of 72. Famously known for his Outlook magazine. Outlook is the rival for India today. He is also associated with several books. Editor Unplugged, which was released recently. The Lucknow Boy. And he is also associated with biographies of Meena Kumari and Sanjay Gandhi. Meena Kumari and Sanjay Gandhi. Sanjay Gandhi was the son of Indira Gandhi and brother of Rajiv Gandhi. Sanjay Gandhi lost his life during his early 30s, met with an helicopter crash. The last issue for the week, International Women's Day. As usual, this year also it was celebrated across the world and the theme for this year is make it happen and the theme for this year is make it happen with this let us conclude this week's deliberations please do join for question and answer sessions in two parts i hope you enjoyed the lecture have a nice day thank you